We've heard we've we've definitely heard about the the health um, costs associated with with smoking use and with the the role of the tobacco industry and propagating and exacerbating that factor. Um, I really wanted to focus in on a few key points. One being Article 5.3 of the Global Tobacco Treaty. And Article 5.3 is the recognition and the the policy point within the Global Tobacco Treaty that affirms that the the goals and the objectives of the tobacco industry is irreconcilably um, in conflict with the goals and the, the objectives of the Global Tobacco Treaty. And it makes some really um, important claims as to how governments should regulate and um, insulate the policymaking space from their relationship with tobacco industry, um, keeping them at arm's length, making sure that meetings that are happening are transparent, are accounting for um, the, the precedent of the Global Tobacco Treaty above all else, um, making sure that the policy making space at the international level doesn't allow for tobacco industry uh, representation or lobbying or influence. But when we talk about making sure that people are healthy and living full and fulfilling lives, um, we don't get there if the tobacco industry is allowed to help write that policy or help have influence over that policy or to use the millions and millions of dollars and billions of dollars in profits that they accumulate each year um, to, to influence officials, to influence governments. So a few of the things that really are of concern to corporate accountability in this moment and really highlight the importance of Article 5.3 are the ways in which the tobacco industry continues to try to assert itself as part of the solution in a world um, where we are hoping that um, people stop using tobacco and people use tobacco less and less every year. Um, one of the ways is through UN partnerships. So while the World Health Organization um, has made uh, stringent demands of its uh, parties of itself to, to insulate itself from the tobacco industry, um, a lot of other UN institutions continue to um, align themselves with the tobacco industry in, in different ways. Um, one of the ways is I think recently UNICEF um, was in the spotlight because of a recent expose and how their partnership with the tobacco industry undermined the, the very ways in which they were trying to um, support things like um, eliminating child labor and um, how the tobacco industry tried to use that that role in um, influencing UN uh, the UNICEF um, to really undermine the policy making that was happening elsewhere. So they used one official uh, partnership and they helped influence policy in other areas. Um, another way is most recently in Nigeria, I think um, some of our allies um, at ERA Environmental Rights Action, uh, Friends of the Earth Nigeria, uh, released a press release um, calling on UNESCO to, to end its partnership and uh, the University of Nigeria um, to end their partnership with the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World um, because they're, it's, uh, it's an official university and they're using their partnership. And the concern here is that the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World advancing uh, lower risk um, products is actually not eliminating um, tobacco use. It's, it's just finding another pathway for tobacco use to take root. And so these, these partnerships highlight the essential role that Article 5.3 plays in making sure that the policymaking space is insulated from the influence and the role that the tobacco industry plays, which is that they want to continue keeping their business and their bottom line as high as possible. They want to continue having their products at the foreground of use. And these partnerships are nothing but thinly veiled marketing um, strategies. They're nothing but thinly veiled um, points of influence in the policymaking space. Yeah.